my days are like running into each other. They're all confused with all this stuff going on. Okay. So if you want to take a few minutes to kind of lay the block out, I, as I posted on Facebook, I always lay the blocks out. That's just the way it goes. I don't know how to do it any other way. Um, it's easier for me to make sure that they're laid out uh, so I know what it's supposed to look like. But the first block we're going to do is this center block. I'm thinking it should be approximately 16, 16 and a half inches once we're done sewing it together. But there's, I'm not quite sure yet, like I said, because I haven't actually sewn it together yet. So we're going to kind of do this together and see what happens. Um, I think this is the next block after that we're, that we're going to be doing, this corner one. So I believe that might be block two, but I'm not positive. All right, and I did all mine in blues, purples, and teals. What I suggest, because there's a lot of little pieces, is just to take it one row at a time. <coughs> Whoops, sorry. That's the dog. <coughs> Boomer, be quiet. Must be mailman here. Picking <coughs> up mail. Boomer, stop. <coughs> sorry, everybody. <coughs> Boomer, be quiet. Uh-oh, he's going to get them all going. See, when I'm at the shop, I don't have to deal with this. Boomer, stop. Boomer. Okay, what I suggested to do this one row at a time, going across. So this first row all the way around is a e somewhat easy one. There's not too much small piecing. Um, when you get into here, I would suggest doing this one and then taking these four pieces and lay them on your sewing table, your extension table, and put those together. Then do this one, then do these, and then do the half square triangle. I suggest picking it up one row at a time or one block at a time, one part at a time. So. I'm just going to take these two and sew them together. How is everybody doing? Hopefully you guys are doing okay. Me? Uh, I'm all right. About as good as can be expected. Oh, thankfully he didn't get all, Boomer didn't get all of the dogs going crazy because that would not have been pretty. Not even a little bit. Are you guys enjoying these videos and projects so far? Now normally I like to just chain piece, but there's so many little itty bitty blocks on this and little pieces that I think, and actually I've changed my mind, okay? I don't think we're gonna be able to go all the way across. I think this part is gonna have to be, and this done by itself, because these triangles are pretty big. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this one and this one and this one and then I'm gonna go down here and do this center. And then we can do this part here and make this little sewn together and this part here and sew this little corner together and then sew these two rows together at one time. You just gotta kinda map it out and I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. And there's a lot of different colors, a lot of different small blocks so I'm thinking for now, I'm going to iron everything to the dark side. Easiest way to do that is have the dark piece up when you set your seam. And then when you iron it over, the seam is automatically going to be on the dark side. With all of these little pieces, 
and I, I say this a lot, but it really does help. I highly, highly suggest starch. Starch is gonna be your friend when you have a lot of little piecing because it's gonna stop everything from stretching and moving and and all that kind of good stuff. All right. I was gonna bring in my little rotary, um, rotating cutting mat, and I use that a lot for laying blocks out, but this block, these blocks are too big. It wouldn't even fit. Pin if you need to. Um, if you feel more comfortable pinning, go ahead. I'm not going to tell you not to. I just don't do a lot of pinning. Only when it comes to, most of the time when it comes to seams. If I'm trying to match up seams, then I do some pinning. Everybody's giving me the silent treatment today, people. Does nobody want to talk to me? It'll make me feel bad. And dog ears. Now this is completely up to you. 95% of the time, I don't cut these off. Because I actually use these a lot of the time in piecing when I'm setting my seam. It gives you a clear um, angle and where to actually make sure everything lines up. We'll see in this one if that's going to work. Like I said, I don't always do it. But we'll see now i'm going to take one of these pieces and sew this first iron it open and then sew another side and i think i'm going to iron and starch these small pieces before like i said when you're dealing with small pieces pieces the starch actually will help you in piecing because they're not going to stretch out of place and get all wonky. All right. I'm getting, all the days are running into each other and I'm having a hard time reminding myself every day what day it is. It's getting pretty bad. Okay, now this is a good lesson. How do you know where to put it? Because you could, this triangle, you could actually, you know, bring it too far this way, too far that way. If you want to be exact, make a center mark in, he, in the center of the triangle, I mean the square, and that'll give you the point where your point's gonna line up. I don't go that crazy. And I just kind of put it in the center of the square, meaning, so I have roughly the same amount hanging off each side. Now, if you wanna be more, per, more exact, then just put your lines on. Mark your center point. Personally, I don't think I'm going to be worried about it. kind of double check and it usually is pretty consistent is if you're really close to putting this triangle where it needs to be 
where you start your seam should be at the junction of where this dog ear meets the, the piece that you're going to actually sew it to. See? Nobody ever taught me that. It's just something that I kind of figured out over time. And that's one of the reasons why the dog ears, I usually leave them on because they're usually, they help me, not hurt me. And, and something like this, the little bit of bulk that's there isn't going to really make a big difference. Sometimes on these whites and the white on whites, right now I'm using um, Toscana white. I love it. It's like one of my favorites. Um, but sometimes, let me tell you, they're very hard to tell what side is the right side and which one is the wrong side. You really got to look at it. <laughs> All right. Now, another reason dog ears are great. I'm trying to line up this one to make sure I'm in the right spot. But since you, once you sew this on, it can be a little bit tricky to figure it out without making marks. So if we turn it around to the back, see how almost perfect this looks as far as sizing and dimensions that's pretty close to me and this right here that little spot is probably a quarter inch or it should be roughly a quarter of an inch from here to here which again acts as a um as a guide to make sure that i'm where i want to be like i told you nobody's ever taught me this this is just something that over time, I've kind of figured out what the amount of quilts that I've made. I'm all about time. I don't have a lot of time no matter what I do. So as far as I'm concerned, my time is very valuable. And anything, even if it's the, the amount of time that it takes to pin something or not pin something, anything that I do that helps my time I'm happy about and saves time I'm very happy about okay so I just got to iron that one ah, it's actually very good once in a while I surprise myself you know how I know it's good Look at how nice and straight that is across. Pretty good up here with the pieces lining up. All right. Now, <laughs> this is going to be a fun one to try and figure out. All right. Now I'm going to take the bottom hand half of it, of that line, and sew these on, I think. This is going to be, I'm almost thinking this might have a Y seam in it. Because I can't think. Oh, I know how we're going to do it. I know. All right, never mind. I know how to do it without a Y seam. All right. Again, I'm going to iron these pieces just and starch them just a little bit because they're so small. Laying out blocks really does help you figure out it's like you know a road map you have to track how you're going to actually put it together after a while it becomes easy but sometimes when you're looking at one like, like this for the first time and you're actually trying to figure it out it takes a little bit all right can somebody please tell me they can hear me and then i'm not talking to myself I know some of you are on, 
Just let me know that you can hear me. So I know that everything is working okay before I get too far. Hello. All right, I'll have to do it myself. Okay, before I get too far. All right, I guess you can hear me. Cause I can hear me. And doing this one the same way we just did the other one. I guess nobody wants to talk today. You just wanna hear me talk? I don't even like listening to myself talk. Okay, that's the first part. <clears throat> Somebody's calling the shop phone. the second part. Oh, you know what? There was one thing I wanted to tell you too about these patterns. Some of you may not understand them. Um, when it says four patches over here, now if it's a square or a rectangle, that's an easy one. But when it's cut into triangles like this and it says eight that means you only need four squares because you're going to cut them in half and then you'll get your eight triangles all right so i will probably post it on facebook too just so that you anybody who doesn't look at it will know and maybe i'll put a note on the pattern itself um just to make it a little bit easier okay so now what i'm going to do is. I'm going to take this piece here and sew it there and the other triangle I'm going to sew on this one like this so that when we put them together whoops then we're just putting together two square parts oh my goodness this is a pain Let me see if I can show you. All right. Can you see that? So I'm going to put... Oh, goodness gracious. What a pain in the butt that is. All right. Hold on. Let's try this again. Even I have to lay them back down. It's the only way to remember what we're supposed to be sewing. All right, let's see if this will be a little bit better. Okay. That's the way it's going to be sewn together. So this triangle onto this side of this one, and the other larger triangle onto the side of this piece, 
That way we have two straight ends to sew together and not a Y seam. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me tell you, I miss my shop when we're doing videos like this because it's very difficult when you're trying to do this and you don't have all the tools that you normally have or they're not close by. It's very difficult. And I'm going to do this one just slightly different. We're going to line up this edge here of the triangle with the edge of the square and then have your dog ears over here even. Okay? And that's how we're going to line it up. And again, I'm actually trying to stitch an end right where the V is for the two dog ears. It's just one extra thing. And as you notice, I haven't put a pin in anything yet. See, I'm sewing right to that dog ear, right into the center of it. Right where the pieces meet. Once I do this half, at least half or a third of this, you'll be able to do the rest of it because it'll all be the same. So we're going to line this seam up, I mean this edge up right here and on the top and then the dog ears when you turn them should be pretty close to even. Here are our two pieces. We're just going to sew them together. Now this seam, we're going to nest is this one right here. Because it's one seam's going one way and the other seam's going the other way. That should be all that you have to worry about. Should is the key word. And like I said, because I'm sewing this together at the same time you are, hopefully, um, we'll figure it out together. This is the one 
or one of the few times that I will actually pin. Just so that those nesting, and again, for those of you who don't know, I had this question before, that is what we call nesting the seam. So, let's see if I can show you. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you, but we've got this top seam going that way, the bottom seam going this way. And when they line up, they're nice and flat and your seam should be perfect every time. If you feel bulky right there, then they're not nested and they're not lined up the way they should be. I you like to use the flat pins because they're flat there's no ball here so it's not gonna lift up your piece when it's going through the machine and I tend to pin it with the pin way out here on an angle so that it's going through the machine this way I can hit with my needle down that seam before I have to take this pin out because that way it ensures that the just the movement of taking the pin out does not move the seam on me. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about any of this, just let me know. I'm coming up on my seam, my needle's down before I actually pull out the pin. A moment of truth. Woo lovely okay look at how nice that seam looks now for now I'm gonna iron my seams on this one towards the dark but to be honest it may change once I get to put everything else together just giving you a heads up And that's okay too. If I have to re-iron the seam going the other way or make adjustments on the blocks that I'm getting ready to put together so that the seams will nest, you always want to nest your seams as much as possible because that's what's going to make sure that your seams match. good if I do say so myself all right so now we're gonna put together this little block and I'm gonna start with the half square triangles and then I'll sew these two half square triangles and these two and then I'll sew this one to this this to this making sure these seams go towards this purple on that side and on this side. That way my, se my seams will nest easily. And so far the purple is the darkest color that I'm using right now, in this block at least. Do me a favor guys and post the colors that you're gonna actually, or the, some of the fabric that you're gonna be using in this so that I can, um, I'm interested. So I wanna see what you guys are using. And I will take this opportunity here to actually chain stitch these little half square triangles. And again, that is, I will not cut the thread when I get done with one before I put the other one right in. I probably should have starched it, but I forgot.
and I'll be putting these videos on YouTube hopefully all right Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. I can't guarantee I can do it everything, but if there's something that you need for um, while we're all going through all this craziness and the quarantines, and let me know. I can't guarantee it that I can help you with everything, but if I can, I'll be more than welcome to. If there's a different class or a technique or something that you want to learn, let me know. Okay, the half square triangles are together and now I'm just going to sew them to the squares. Now remember, we're going to iron the seams towards the dark side, I think. That's what I'm saying right now. Now these blocks were a little, I cut just slightly bigger than we needed. So we're probably going to have to do a little trimming up on this block before we sew them together, just as an FYI. A lot of people don't like when they start patterns with eighths. So I figured it's better to have it bigger um, and cut it down than it is if somebody cuts it wrong because it's an eighth. And I think this originally was like seven eighths or, you know, they were five eighths and we did, I had you do it three quarters. And again, I'm in a chain piece. I always err on the side of caution, meaning I would definitely rather have the block too big than too small. And I believe the corner blocks are the same as far as being too big. But that's okay, not a big deal, easy. And I'll show you what we're gonna do to figure out size and figure out how we're going to cut them down or trim them up I should say. And I think I'm gonna change my mind. I think we're gonna sew them towards the, the block, the one full block, because by sewing, I mean ironing, by ironing the seam this way, like I originally wanted to, it's gonna create, I think, too much bulk. I'd rather have a neater piece. So I'm gonna iron them towards the full block. So instead of the half square triangle side, it's gonna be ironed that way. Now, I just gotta look and make sure I know which way. 
to sew it together. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I sewed it wrong. Go figure. I did. I sewed it to the wrong side. <laughs> Yucky pooey. All right. Jack the Ripper comes out. It happens to the best of us. I'm pretty sure I sewed it to the wrong side. What I did is I sewed the wrong um, when I laid it on, when I laid this one on top, and this is a good reason to actually pin, because if you pin it and pin it on the side, you're going to sew it, you won't make the mistake I did. But when I laid the square on top of the half square triangle to sew, I sewed the wrong side, that's all. No big deal. It's pretty easy to fix. I literally have to look at my phone lately when I get up just to figure out what day it is. It's, it's bad. I have one day running into another into another. And don't be surprised if my father wakes up and decides to walk over here if we're not done with this video. I can't believe nobody wants to talk to me. I feel so lonely. I don't know. I hate talking to myself. I know you guys have know that. I've told you that before. And that's one of the hardest things with this these videos. So I always feel like I'm talking to myself. again that's gonna go there and that's gonna go there and that's gonna go there okay it'll be quick I promise Quickie, quickie. Not too bad. We all make mistakes, and let me tell you, I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Especially when I'm sewing a pattern together for the first time. It happens more than you, I would like it to happen, but I'm okay. I have no problem making mistakes. I know I do. That's how you learn though. I guarantee you, I've only made mistakes like that once or twice and I learned pretty quickly. Okay, how to not make the same mistake. There it is, okay. So now I'm just gonna sew this one to this one again. 
nesting the seams. And then we're going to measure it and see how big it is. Because that will determine. I want to measure these blocks too. And that'll determine if we've got everything sized correctly when we try to cut it down or trim it up, I should say. I should have pinned this, but I didn't. All right. Now it's going to look a little wonky because those two squares, I told you we cut bigger. So this one is too big and this one is too big. Um, oh my goodness, it's so cool. Once in a while, it works out. Once in a while. All right, let's see. What I'm going to recommend, if you haven't sewed it yet, is to, when you're doing these blocks, do a scant quarter. And if you don't know what that is, that is um, not quite a quarter, almost a quarter of an inch seam. I think you will have a better shot. And all I'm going to do is trim up the extra piece from the larger block. And yes, I'm eyeballing it. I'm eyeballing it, but I'm putting, using my ruler to on the seams to know where to cut to make sure it's straight. There you go. All right, so. I've got two more of these half square triangles that we, I didn't put together yet that I'm gonna sew together. And then we'll be, and the other block, just like the one we just did. And then we'll be able to put a good portion of this block together. One more little block and then we can put them together or at least put almost half of it together but at least you'll know what you need to do for the rest of it And I always, like again, put the blocks, lay them down once you're done sewing the smaller pieces together because that way you know exactly where you are and how it's supposed to lay out. It's just repetition. So as long as you keep laying it out, 
you know exactly how they have to go together. <laughs> so this goes here, and that goes there. I'm just going to finish making that small block that we just did. Like I said, use a scant quarter of an inch. Now, a scant quarter of an inch, for those of you that don't know, I'm going to remind you, that's almost a quarter of an inch seam. So if you're using the um, quarter inch foot with a guide, make sure you don't touch the guide with the fabric that you're sewing together just give yourself that little little bit of extra room how quiet everybody is today nobody wants to touch to me you guys are gonna give me a complex and it might be hard to tell but maybe on this side Oops. It's almost a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but it's just a tiny bit shy. That's what they mean when they say scant quarter of an inch. How many projects have you guys got in the works or getting done while you're in quarantine? Even though we're not officially, well, at least in Florida, we're not officially in quarantine. Where is everybody from? Tell me. Again, we're going to iron our seams to the full square, not the half square triangle. It'll create less bulk that way. I'm using a lot of Toscana, which is about as solid as I get in the shop. Okay, here are my two corners, there are my two pieces. And again, we're gonna nest the seams so that 
our seams will line up perfectly. I like Toscana. It's one of my favorite um, quote unquote solid fabrics. I don't tend to buy solids. I mean, I usually have black or white in the shop and you have to ask for it, but pretty much that's it for solids. They just, I don't know, take up too much room as far as I'm concerned. And I'd much rather have other fabric in there than the solids. And that's why Toscana works really well because it's a tone on tone, but it's pretty close to solid. This is a good um, opportunity for you to start learning, if you haven't learned this lesson yet, um, how to keep your seams nice and neat. It really does make a big difference when you're piecing, especially if you're piecing something that has a lot of small blocks. Um, it, it really does make a big deal. It'll make your life much easier. So whenever possible, make sure your seams are nice and flat and they're all gonna lay flat on the back of a quilt. Um, when you're quilting, it's gonna be a big deal. Then the needle doesn't get stuck or, you know, if you're trying to quilt on a quilt that has bulky seams or, you know, they're, they're a mess, what'll happen is it'll be, as you're stitching and you're going across, your needle could get stuck in the seam um, and make one or two, three or four, too many stitches more than you want, small stitches. It just makes life much easier. Now, if we wanted to go one step, and I don't, don't think it's gonna be a big deal here. Let me see. You could, not that I think it, it might help. I don't know, we'll have to see. You could twist your seam. Oops. Let me iron this so you can see what I'm talking about. It might, when you're help you when you're doing something with a lot of small blocks. Basically, you're just opening this one part. This part of the seam and this part of the seam are still closed. You're just opening that one part. And what that does is instead of this seam going straight one way or the other, it's actually going in opposite directions. And it could help when we're getting ready to sew the, these small parts of the blocks together. Not quite sure yet, but we'll see. When you're dealing with a lot of small pieces, sometimes that helps. I know Bonnie Hunter, if any of you have done hers, she recommends doing this a lot. And it takes an extra minute, but or a couple of seconds, but it's not that big of a deal. All right. don't think it's going to make a big deal piecing these parts together. All right, so now we're going to do our four blocks. And what I mean by that, and I will show you,
see that's one of our corners now we've got the white piece which is definitely bigger than you need these two half square tri triangles which are going to make a bow or a bow tie and then the smaller block that you pieced it's almost like an arrow okay Oh, you know what? I gotta trim this one up just a tiny bit. No. And I think by doing the scant quarter of an inch, it'll work much better for you. Um, I think they'll piece together better and you're not gonna have as much trimming. So I highly recommend doing a scant quarter of an inch on those little blocks. Every once in a while I hear some bird or squirrel in the flu up on the roof and it's a tinny sound so in between that sound I'm hearing boomer snore again <laughs> my silly silly dog Here's our two pieces and I got to change the seam on this one. So this one I'm going to actually, both of them, we're going to sew the eye in the seam towards the half square triangle. That way your seams will nest much easier. there you go okay so we're going to nest the seams right here and we're going to do it again on this corner and then we'll be ready to put almost half of the block together Have my phone on vibrate so it doesn't ring while I'm doing the video but it's making all kinds of noises I think I have too many notifications
again I pin it on an angle specifically so my needle can go down in the seam before I have to take the pin out and I lift my foot up so it doesn't push my seams in a direction that I don't want them to go Probably could have gotten a little bit closer, but let's see. It's not going to matter where we iron this, so I'm going to iron it, the seam up this way. With all these little pieces in this part, if I don't have to iron it down, the better. one now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then put it together It's one of the few things about brother machines and that I really don't like. If your thread isn't pulled to the needle and you have a long enough tail, sometimes, or I should say most of the time, it will actually pull the, th the thread out of the needle when you first start. Especially if you're not right on top of the fabric to sew. Now, if you did a scant quarter of an inch on this block, even though this one is just a tiny bit, it's the eighth of an inch bigger than I expected it to be, because I told you to cut this a little bit bigger. That's okay. When we're done with the whole block, we can easily trim that off and square it. And remember, we're going to actually iron these seams towards the half square triangle. 
So if you put the half square triangle on top when you set your seams and you go to turn them over, it'll be on the half square triangle part. just have to oops sew these two together again nesting your seams and this is again one of the few times I will actually pin the seam use pins I just want to make sure that that seam stays nested and lines up exactly where I want it. looks actually pretty good if I do say so myself I know this is going to be too big here that's because originally I did this with a quarter inch steam and this one instead of a scant quarter which is okay I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine that's why I tell you guys to do it a scant quarter of an inch and make it easier on you So this one to this one, and then this one to this one, and there you go. You can do the center block, and I'll show you which one I'm talking about. This whole centerpiece right here by itself. Um, stitching it just the way we already did it, and then do this tart top part again just like we're going to do this part here and then sew all three pieces together nice thing is there's only one little seam that you might want to watch for and that's this one right here with and it's going to be right there so what I recommend is to make sure this is going to be lined up let's see um <laughs> is let's try this all right if you really want to do this the right way not that it really I don't think it's gonna matter too much but if you've ever done um lo the Lone Star class okay because this seam is going to be cut on an angle, if you do a quarter inch mark right here on this seam, right over the thread, and then do a quarter inch mark right here on this seam, I believe if we put them together, they will be perfect. So let's try it. You never know. Uh, 
that's how I learned a lot of what I do. Believe it or not, it's trial and error. A lot of it is trial and error. I mean, I didn't have a lot of teachers to teach me this. Um, when I first learned, you know, it was a bunch of old ladies doing hand sewing. And you all know how I feel about hand sewing. It's yucky. That is a technical term, by the way. So when it came to machine stuff, you know, my mom didn't quilt. She actually sews clothes. And I had to do a lot of trial and error for myself. Some of it's YouTube, but when I learned many, many years ago, there was no such thing as YouTube. Alright. So, I'm going to put a pin in that line. Right where it, the, the line in the seam meets. Just like that. I hope you can see it. Okay. Make sure the pin stands up. And we're going to try it. What I mean by stands up is nice and straight up and down. And then take another pin. And pin it right next to it. The seam. So you're pinning these two pieces together. Just like you normally would when you pin. And then you can take that pin that you use to align it out. And just for laughs and giggles, I'm going to increase the length of my stitch so it just base stitches. Just so I can see if this works. Because if it works, great. I can restitch it. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to pull a lot of stitches out. If you know what I mean. And if when you're stitching, especially if you stitch with the, you know, some of the, a quarter inch foot. And you're coming down like this, make sure your stitch, your foot, sews right over the center of that line that you made to pin these. The line that goes over the seam. Alright. Here we go. See if that was exactly what. Oh, I am so good. Sometimes it scares me. All right, now I just got to sew over it again. Look. And see how well that corner and that corner meet? Perfect. So now you know how to do that. Let me just sew over it again. If you make a mistake, it's you got to go into it thinking it's not a big deal because it isn't. The only problem it's a big deal is if you cut some fabric that and you cut it wrong or too small and you can't get that fabric anymore. And even then, it's not that big of a deal. At least to me, it isn't because then you just have to go figure out a different fabric. It's not like we don't all have stashes that we can't use up fabric all right and I think I'm gonna iron this um, it wants to go down for the most part towards away from the center line it wants to go this way so I think I'm gonna let it go that way I think I am going to like this quilt. I hope I like this quilt. I hope you like this quilt. All 
All right. Now we've got to take this one and I and sew it on there. What I think I'm going to do is once this part here is done, I'm going to call it quits on the video. That way you know pretty much what you got to do. And we're going to sew the rest of it. And then I will post in the group as far as the size of the block it should be trimmed up to. Let me know if you have any questions or problems. just got to fix one little part because I don't want to sew my po over my points. You want to see what I'm talking about? I don't want to cut that point off. So the easiest way to do this, you don't have to unstitch the whole thing. All I did was unstitch a little bit before that point and a little bit after that point see and then just adjust it accordingly it went off track just a little bit and then when you sew you can see where we sewed the half square the triangle pieces onto the square you don't want to stitch over the X. If you stitch even one thread length on this side of the X towards the edge, you'll be all set and you won't cut off your point. I hope you're enjoying this. Kind of hard to tell. Because nobody will talk to me today. You know, if I didn't know any better, I think you people were ig ignoring me. <laughs> It'll make me upset. Only joking. I know probably what's going to happen is most of you are going to watch this after I'm done. Which is fine. If this is not what you want to do, this project then let me know and I will come up with something else 